Here we okay. go. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for Victor Allen's new new sports. The Neil Urban Look at Sports, written, directed, produced by Victor Allen. That's right, the man that the ladies have nicknamed Sexual Jocelyn. Take a look. Here he is, the ball-headed black man. He It's a lot of yelling, man. Try to, get, yelling. try to get macho. Is so that yelling. appropriately macho for you? I don't. I don't think. <laughs> I think people who are trying to be macho just it's hard to accomplish that. So what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that you, didn't macho cut it? is natural. <laughs> no, I didn't cut it, bro. <laughs> okay, no, not I'll practice. <laughs> yeah, I can. I know I can practice. I can practice myself, but I'm not. <laughs> Too bad, because <laughs> I'm a fan reporter. Welcome to New New Sports, you guys. <laughs> I'm a fan reporter. All I do is report as a fan, and fans don't have to get it right. And, of course, my opinion is always right because I own it. You know, I, I, I can't cover all the football first because it's easy to do that because you just got to pick your teams and you have to go with the flow. But I got to recognize somebody who may be making a history, and I'm not sure he's going to be recognized for that, but over the weekend, a NASCAR Sprint Cup championship title, the sixth was awarded to and earned by Jimmy Johnson. Got to give him props. Yeah. Got to give him props, man. And the discussion, <laughs> that's a good one. The discussion becomes, to me, it becomes, okay, he doesn't come from what they call the area that the history of NASCAR comes from. He's Southern California. He's from El Cajon. So there's my... I didn't and, know that. Yeah, see, this is the part that... And he didn't start off in, as, in a young age doing wow. the traditional stuff. So he doesn't come from what we call that community, whether it's Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia. He's not from the South. He's not from the South. <laughs> okay. So now let me just tell you where I'm going with this because I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm just a fan. So already they're asking the question, is he the greatest ever? Well, he has tied two legacy icons or icons who have legacies Richard Petty which that name every time you drop yes, it, even if yes. you don't even if you don't watch you know his name is synonymous right. with NASCAR or 43 yeah you got the number number 43 and then of course the man Dale Earnhardt senior they both won mm -hmm. six titles mm. Jimmy has done it at the youngest age I believe of 37 Wow He's in that same lane that we're dealing with when they talked about Tiger Woods going against Jack Nicklaus as being the all-time, the greatest, but it's yet to be determined because it's, 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 going. it's going. It's going for a while, and he's going to be racing for a while because you can keep racing for 10, 20 years. My question is, this is the, the trip. You know the most popular driver, whether he wins or not, is Dale Earnhardt Jr. The fans love him. Number one. How old is he now? I'm not sure. I, you know, I'm going to well, say because you know what? Because you guys, a lot of it has to do with time. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's 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 natural to embrace the ones you get a chance to see. Right. You know, and he's good. They, I mean, he's good, but he's just not Jimmy Johnson right now. No, it's just amazing because they the other day they just kind of um, Mario Andretti was on TV for something, and right. I went, I was like, you guys still remember him? Okay, I'm glad because it's really nice to see that. We're going, so that's cool. That, so, that's good, Vic. I know. See, the, the part that became apparent, I start following what they call the chat, the talk. When well, somebody wins six titles, that's six. That's like NBA championships. Yeah. No, you can't he, deny. It's one of those things where I say, I just don't think that community, the fans embrace him the same, whereas they celebrate and cheer because... Earnhardt Sr. set the trend for his son, who is good. I mean, the guy's good. I just consider that a marketing or a promotional issue because, you know, I wonder how they measure, too, because the penetration that, that they're getting, NASCAR, in today's world, Vic, is unprecedented. You know what I'm saying? They just, I wonder who they're measuring them against because it's already unprecedented penetration. And exposure. I had to use that word penetration <laughs> and exposure. <laughs> right, right. Well, and here's the thing. I'm not saying, you know, you hear about athletes, and I'm going to get into this other part of this. You hear about athletes who also go, like Tim Duncan. He yeah. just he's not media friendly as it relates to the commercialism, okay? Now, I'm not saying. That's cold-blooded, I'm man. just saying. No, look, Tim is not worried about it. 
right. it's him. He's not the one that's trying to go after it. Right. But he wins championships. Well, Jimmy gets commercials and everything, but Dale behind Danica Patrick gets almost all of it. So the community yes, responds. And so it should be. Right. So here's my question. <laughs> here's my question. <laughs> For obvious reasons, because I, I I watch Dale, you know he's he's straight rolling, he's straight yeah, rolling. I'm not yeah. mad at. I find no flaws with him at all. And look at these girls, by the way. <laughs> okay. Look at this sprint. What is this outfit? Okay, look man. Look at this sprint girl. All right, stop, man. Stop looking at. I'm just saying. Look at this. I know. I, I'm I'm looking at. They that. like brand like wrestling. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm just saying. Think. I've never seen a girl out go. See, this is why we love you. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm saying this. That's why we love you. Do you think, even if there's a good chance Jimmy's going to win another title or two, and it's going to go beyond and be the all-time, I just got a funny feeling. This is just me. It's very difficult to hail from Southern California and be in NASCAR and, re and get the same respect. Because you say, you really don't come from where we come from. And a lot of people think about that. So I'm wondering, when you got six titles and people are not celebrating the same way, where do you think the disconnect is, Mark? Oh, I just think it's a matter of time. Okay. Remember, there was a time we didn't like John Elway. Remember, right? right. Remember, you know. What oh I'm yeah, saying? yeah. No, I, you know, I remind myself but, of these but, little points in time. And Vic, I think because of what you've already acknowledged, and with the ongoing programs, right. he's going to have his place in in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, he's he, already he's already done. It's it's, it's 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 a done deal. Well, the story's already here this morning. They've already posted. One writer's already said he's the greatest ever because he's achieved the most championships and you rated by championships at the youngest age so he says well i don't have to wait later that that he did it that, he that did has it. to be it at least one of the criteria right that right. people use in any sport right right number of championships Chips. at what age right starting at that's the age hard. that's hard he, to argue it's yes. amazing what he's done most of the nascar circuit and drivers start really young you know in their teens or even as you know even at be pre-teens this guy really jumped in at 21 and he didn't go the regular route and he's they call him the machine his whole organization is machine so the question became when i start thinking about that you can't go fight on behalf of getting this man more appreciation what i can do is address the person who raised a different question are nascar drivers athletes and of course our famous donovan mcnab already said that uh, in the last couple of days who said they're athletes no 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 hold on let me I, tell you, let me, I hold saw, on. Let I me, saw yeah, that. He said they're not athletes. But who, for who said they were? Did somebody actually say they were? I'm well, just... no, 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 no. It's not. The, the point is, is they were talk, using comparisons about achievements, championships, and things that how you go about winning. Donovan acknowledged Jimmy Johnson as saying, in comparison to other icons in other sports, I believe, and I don't have the exact story. Yeah. He volunteered and say, "Well, they're not athletes because right. they don't have to do conditioning, said, but they do have to do conditioning." Well, I, I did, that's why I wanted to know who initiated because to me it's a non-topic almost. They aren't athletes, but it's, I mean, you want to shooting after a while, you could add a bunch of stuff in their pool, okay, go billiards, whatever. I go like that's why I was actually more curious, even though it's kind of like one of those conversations that sort of sparked. That doesn't mean that they're not great because they don't fall into the realm of athletic achievement. It still falls into the realm of a great achievement. And billiards, those kinds of things. But no, I, I wouldn't call NASCAR uh, drivers athletes I'd be, either. I have to be careful. Because Everybody I, has I, to have I, conditioning to live. Right. See, the part that gets involved <laughs> in this is that it takes a, a it, the one thing they say about Jimmy, that he has the ultimate physical regimen to keep him on top of his game which make allows him to excel so some part of him being an athlete contributing his his methodology to the race because they say the hardest part about it is sitting in a car at over 103 or 4 degrees for hours on end and that's why the older guys retire early so there's a physical demand so I'm I'm that's I'm, just I'm a not sure. that's a difficult discussion anybody living then who right. works out as an athlete. Right. Words, see, and that's why I go to the distinction right. becomes mute. In other words, if you just want to live long and so you work out and take care of yourself, then you would meet this criteria. That's why it's, it's not part of the discussion to me. Everybody who wants to live long is going to exercise and do things. 
So in that sense, it would the, they would have to include every person living. Right. Damn near. Right. So that's why I go like, no, they're not athletes, and it doesn't make you an athlete to me because you decide because you decide to live an athletic lifestyle. That doesn't mean that your profession. In other words, there are guys who go to Wall Street every day right. who do extreme conditioning. Right. I don't call them athletes. They I, could I, be. I, they could be athletes, but that for the purpose. What their profession is not. Right. They can't say I'm a professional athlete. He can't say that. See, and I think the part that's hard is I can't make that determination until I have been able to sit in the car, deal with the power, (laughs) the speed, and the requirements of the reactions and all these things that do require some some physical, uh, I guess, involvement. Even if it's just your arms. So everything that requires uh, physical involvement would make you. How about an astronaut? No, no, I'm I'm just saying. No, no, and I agree. See, what I'm saying is they do have these conditions. So I don't want to say, let me say what I think was the issue here. I don't think you're going to get a whole bunch of athletes where, and it's not happening right now with McDonovan. They're going, you're not the person who should say that. Now, you can, if you want to, to be politically correct or technically correct. But him saying it, I said, so you just told somebody something from your experience and expertise of a driver. I said, if he was driving, I would say, okay, I can listen to you, but he's doing it from a a, a chair. And that's the only part I had a a conflict with. So whether I agree or disagree, I said, dude, shouldn't you try it first to see what demands are before you go But based on that criteria, no one would be able able to make any opinion other than drivers. So then then no one would ever be able to have any opinion about anybody else. Right, and I'm I'm saying when when you, somebody's making a discussion about the the value of what you do especially in athletes and this is not the only sport or what they call it because it comes under sports nascar comes under sports so somewhere along the way there is a disconnect well i kind of disagree i don't think it's actually putting a value on you at all it's saying the question is whether or not your profession or people who drive cars athletes then i would go people who drive trucks then right would be in there right and people who drive the thing so i my answer is really clear cut i don't think it's a matter of any of the political career. that's why when i read the article i was kind of surprised right i just took it as a jonathan it's one of those political correctness no they're not athletes okay Okay, and I want to actually, I go the other way. Show me the person who says they are. Right. Well, there's, there's, I don't even think Jimmy but, Johnson says that they are. Well, but see, he's the first one that came out <laughs> and said, just so you know, he is the first one to respond this morning to him and says, I am an athlete. So here, here's the part where but that's I'm going, not what we said. Are, are NASCAR drivers athletes, not whether or not you're well, an athlete? No, he, no, he was referring to him. He says, NASCAR driver. Jimmy Johnson, the example. So by definition, right. a driver's an athlete. No, I'm only telling you what he said. I'm only saying this. He, McNabb used Jimmy as the example with NASCAR drivers and says he's not an athlete. No, he said, not, he said NASCAR, drivers, he didn't say that. He's not, he, I read that part. But he said NASCAR, but, he said but, drivers are not athletes. But with the point that Jimmy Johnson was the singular name they used in leading into the story. But he didn't say that, though. But he's, okay, is he saying, is he saying Jimmy is not an athlete? He, no, he said, he said, drive, because to me, they're different statements. One is a personal statement that I wouldn't know about Jimmy and his athletic routine. The other one is a statement about whether being a driver allows yeah. you to be classified as an athlete. Right. That's clear to me. Right. And that no, answer is no. Right. And I'm saying, but Jimmy is the one who's responding. Right. I mean, Jimmy so, can respond, right. but that doesn't make him Jimmy correct. Look, I mean, it, he could have done this. He could have said they're NASCAR. But he actually, I'm saying Jimmy is responding because he actually pointed towards Jimmy as but, the example in the story. Right. But the response is, see, to me, I t- from what I read, remember, he said, I am an athlete. That's not a contradicting statement. Right. I'm not even contradicting Me that. Either. I'm the That's same a different here. statement. Right. We, the, the question was, and the, and the point Donovan said, was that dr- NASCAR drivers are not athletes right. by definition. And I wholeheartedly oh, support no, that. I understand And that. they are not. No more than truck drivers or astronauts. Yes, astronauts do a lot of training and are athletic right. too. That's not what we're saying. Right. I know, I know the technical definition of it. Well, I just I, said when Donovan comes out and says it, I said, well, was that smart for you to to do because that's where I was going. Well, at. I mean, smart because people don't want you to have an opinion. Well, no, no, no. They don't want you to have an opinion. I'm just saying, is he trending to good? The whole story is is Donovan trying to create a firestorm. That's what this I is. I don't about. see it as that. I think it's a natural comment 
based on from the article I read that people tried to build it up and hype it. I think he's totally entitled to his opinion, which I actually agree with. I think the part that deals with Donovan is that he has to make up for the history of him not stepping up and having an opinion while he played his whole football career. Well, I think if, if I don't think that people should have to take their whole career and line it up to everybody just to have an opinion. Then none of us would be able to have an no, opinion. No, what they were saying is is when you're on the team and then you want you're, you want to stand up for your teammates, especially in that foxhole, that saying something, just anything, would help towards it since you're the leader, you're the captain, but you don't take that role. That's something that we all would do, even if an opinion. We have a so, platform and because here too. of that, you can't comment I, I, about NASCAR no, drivers. No, no. What they're saying is the credibility of him saying it is lesser, and, less because he hasn't stood up in his own profession. To say I would that. say consider the source. His credibility with me on this is excellent because he, you drink that Campbell's. Soup. So I disagree. I go. I go. <laughs> like I said, show me the other people. Show me the other ones who are willing to stand up <laughs> you, you, and tell me publicly you know what sports writer. This? Mario got a basket full of Campbell's soup. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to the next one. See, the good part about what I like about that is that it is split down the middle. A lot of people are split on this one. And Donovan is the voice and the energy. And I think he's keeping himself in the trends on this. And maybe it's smart it's right now. It's the same old people. Yeah. If they don't like Donovan, they're not going to like him having any comment on any. <laughs> like I said, he can comment the wonderful day with the orphan children. Who are you to talk about orphan children? Why you Where bring, you orphan your team? Why are you going to bring up orphans? <laughs> he can't, like I said, those who don't like him, he can't say anything. Well, you, this is the good part about why I like what we're doing here is because it is split down the middle when you follow what they're doing. I said, it's really, you got this side and that side. And I think Donovan, thumbs up, dude. You kept your name in the trends and it worked. Now, let's go to the next one. I don't know if you want to be a trend depending on which side of the uh, football line you're on, but when you are the biggest running back, period, you're a 6'5", 400-pound prep Native American running back who comes out of the wishbone almost on every play. Is it fair that these (laughs) prep high school opponents think it's fair that you keep giving him the ball? And when you go see the video, it's pain and punishment. And I'm just going to say this. Mario's played high school football. I did not. What is it like to sit there and go, here's somebody on the average on the other side of the line, they're about 160, 180, 190 pounds. And this guy's coming fully loaded, looking like this. There's a video showing you the pound and pain, the pain, pounding, and punishment. Now, Mario, as a linebacker, as anyone that's a defensive end, whatever, and how often do you want to hit him? Yeah, just put yourself on the other side of the line. Well, you know, the thing about, unfortunately, folks this big is that it's hard to initially usually to initiate movement that's why they don't go usually go much further right because they you know it's hard for them to get out the stand so they're usually not hitting the line real fast the other thing what's easy about people this big is easy to find them okay yeah, yeah. he's you know, not gonna try to fake you the, out the, or anything mm, like that no the wishbone when you go see the video he is fairly, you know, mobile. Fire. So <laughs> he's fairly mobile. And I mean, he has a, some, you know, light, light feet on him. But it's that he keeps going down the middle. <laughs> well, I wish him well because, you know, he's, a, he's looking at him. Right. He's at such a risk for uh, disease. Of course. But when you're the opponent, when you're sitting there on the other side, how often would you look forward to hitting this cat? Oh, I don't know. I, well, four hundred pounds now, six five. I played against you know my my buddy. When I played against Cooper, he was three hundred at least. Cooper never moved like this. No, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I I don't really find big big overwhelmingly big guys intimidating personally. I think when you're not big and you're like. Well, like, it depends. You can to, hit him low. They have a different center of gravity. Well, he's got thick legs, and they are trying to hit him low on many plays, and they get him, but it's the constant pounding. That's what I'm looking at, that every play, they, they just go, okay, who's going to hit him first? I guess because I play middle linebacker, my mentality is different. I'd be thinking after the sixth time I've hit him, which it won't be hard to do. Right. We'll see who's feeling it harder. 
okay, you're very confident, and I'm looking at the young kids here, and I'm going, I don't see anybody slowing him up. <laughs> Blindbacker well, or I, anyone. I, I, I'm just I, saying. I get it. I mean, I'm just saying. You know, why, that's why you don't have people like this playing in college, though. Because <laughs> what happens along the way? Well, they, they run into smaller people who know how to hit them. Well, what, they, what they're saying is, is if they decide to do anything with him, they will have him lose weight to see what he can really do, see if his agility is. Well, they would have to. Because, yeah. first of all, I can tell you his health risks already. When you guys take a look at this, take a look at this. Um, man, if you do were to do an, an echocardiogram on somebody like this and actually start looking at their cardiac function, yeah. you know, it, you, you, you would have trouble purchasing insurance for them. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, so it's a phenomenon, but if you think about the ones we've had in the past, even some of the big ones for the NFL, right? you know it's almost never worked consistently, no. nor do they have any kind of length to the career. No, they don't, and this is maybe a stretch, but he is, he is not the, what they would call the lineman taking a play here and there. They're actually putting him functionally as a running back, so yeah, there's going to be some real serious risk with what he's doing so yeah I see that happening there's right some, now there's some there's and there's been I can think especially even in LA right there's been some precedent setting ones not 400 pounds of no, course no he's the biggest but you definitely have have had some in the, in the high twos three. maybe yeah in high twos the biggest I don't know, that, know. I, don't know any, I didn't see any high school ones that were three Vic the hardest the that biggest three the biggest I've ever seen in professional football is like 280 maybe 275 yeah cause somebody cause there was a couple of them that was 260 right. a few of them that were like 260 right yeah in the NFL he's 400 and I'm, I shoot. All I know is this: I'm, he's I'm, bigger than the line. I, I'm, a, I'm the safety. I'm going. You guys hit them all first. Oh yeah. Well, they was they go, they were saying that anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're the safety, you may be in a good mood. But if he gets to, you, you know what? I just different. used to personally. My thing as a linebacker was the shorter, shiftier running backs. Right. I never was scared of bigger people, mainly because they were never fast or right. could do moves. Right. They were like a city target. And then it was just a matter of strength now and mobility, so it made it a different thing. And if it's a running back, ultimately, you could punish them once. You know, it's the death of a thousand cuts. Oh, yeah. It, it, this is no different than the uh, Earl Campbell syndrome when he was the biggest at that time. But, you know, it's... But he, ooh, it wasn't this, though. <laughs> I know. See, my point. And my point is, I remember Earl Campbell and the pain he issued. Now, he paid for it, but at that time, you're not thinking of it. I know he yeah, just. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> compare Earl Campbell to yeah. none of them because he, he was. That's a different body. That's my point. In condition. And PFC, you did watch it. This is it. just overweight. It's, <laughs> it's, and, and PFC just watched and said, he's mobile. You actually see it. It's a lot more footage on him and you go oh he's a little bit more than just like the refrigerator Perry back in the day you just give him the ball and I think he's and, less mobile than the refrigerator Perry oh no 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 you got from, to see from the, what I saw refrigerator Perry had way more but this no, guy this no. guy in other words that's why Perry was able to play that role on the line yeah but he no, didn't this he, guy can't be a nose guard no 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 I'm talking about I'm talking about getting they would take refrigerator and give him the ball to go into a touchdown play the running back role once in a blue moon but I'm saying to play nose guard and do all the movements that it requires oh, no. to be a professional oh, yeah. guard. He had he just demonstrated way more mobility than this guy showed right. in those videos. That's yeah. all I'm saying. No, I'm talking about his running back. I'm just saying, but you saw mobility playing nose guard. This guy didn't show to me much mobility at all. He was running in sort of a straight up, straight. That, that's line. why I said there's more footage on him. That's what I'm saying. It's not the only one. I've just used the one. He's that, not gonna make any cuts. Yeah, not as many as you think. He does go left to right. He does. There are some. I just did pick the one that had the most cutaways in it. So let me go to the next story. The next story. It is football, you guys, and there is a comeback in the NFC East, and I think. I, I got totally caught off on this one. I mean, I caught off guard. If you would have asked me about the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants, I would have told you, tank the season, leave it alone, it's done. Dallas gets to win even if they're losing. Well, guess who's leading the NFC East right now? The Philadelphia Eagles. How did that happen? Nick Foles has come in and decided that Michael Vick will not return by his performance this year, whether people speculate on it or not. And you're watching this man in this role, and it looks like he naturally fits in. Mara, I don't know if you watched any of the game with him. What did you think about the Philadelphia Eagles performance? 
I, I, I've, I've been amazed by it. I've been, there's a bunch of teams that have shocked us this year. <laughs> Good and bad. No, I, I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm, yeah. I'm amazed. You know, I like, Ch- I like what Chip Kelly yep. has done. And yes. I said that in the beginning. At yep. least I did from the beginning. I've been yep. kind of consistent. Yeah. I liked what and I saw in the preseason. And I'm just shocked by Foles because to me, when you look at him closely, he looks so gangly. Right. He just doesn't physically. And then when he ran and did what he did effectively, you have to really give him credit. So that is the fantasy story right now, right? It's actually yeah. the, one of the fantasy stories of the season. It is definitely one. He does what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And he actually says, when I have to go down, I go down. And I'm not going to try to take a <laughs> Okay. Man. Okay, wait a minute. Comment. Ugh. You got a comment, man? Have, no, Come on, man. So no. Give me a comment. I'm you can't sit here on the show. That's Philadelphia. You take a stand. The things they do for a cheesesteak. <laughs> take a stand. <laughs> take a stand, man. Come on. Hey, you know what, thing, Vic? What? I will say this, too. These are the most rabid... Okay, I don't... I, if, I don't know if any of you know Philadelphia fans personally. I'm sure PMC does. <laughs> these are some rabid fans. Right. That's part of the Donovan McNabb thing. They still, well, no, I don't know. Some of them love him. You know, they're just some really opinionated fans. Right. But you got to give them some love. You know that the, their, their, tail, t- their tailgating is right now. <laughs> right. It's going crazy. <laughs> That's right. You know, I'm they just saying, it. they are going crazy tailgating right now. And so rightfully I, I, so. It, it, it is. I got to say, hey, I am amazed and I'm loving it. Because to me, mm-hmm. they, are, they are one of the teams to watch. And I want to watch, I want to see them more. Than the other teams. They have a defense that's stepping up so fast that basically you're going, wow, Chip Kelly was supposed to be this offensive whiz that was going to bring in this nonstop, move fast, kick it. They're more traditional. And their defense has stepped up, which now tells me he just needed some time, and he's turning over the culture along with Nick Foles well, that's in the a thing. short time, dude. That's the thing. Even though when you look around, Vic, isn't it interesting how now – we notice teams that use stepped up tempo because Peyton does it all the time. True, you know, and so now now I'm noticing it. I have to admit, I didn't notice it the same. Right now, I'm really noticing how fast some of them are going. <laughs> yeah, you get so, it. So, but 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 Peyton has said that. Peyton has said, "Well, we've been going fast through." But it certainly is wonderful to watch and part of the excitement. Well, it is one of the positives of this season. Well, and here's the other one, because I, I won't spend a lot of time on it. I, I, I do celebrate that, uh, that it's still a ways to go with Philadelphia, but it's going to take me over to the Giants. Because if you had to turn around and say, when your quarterback is throwing more interceptions than touchdowns, you have to stop and say, what's wrong? This team, the Giants, was the worst performing team in the first few games that we were all scratching our heads. Now, all of a sudden, they got a win streak, and it's more than two games. They've done it before. Tom Coughlin is blown. Yeah. It's like two, at least two or three times I remember this starting bad. Right. And turning around. I think the year they won the Super Bowl. Yes, they did. They did. <laughs> yeah. So they, it's amazing. It's hard to bet against one of the Mannings. And so, yeah. But anyway, good luck to them. They, they, you know what? Okay, but I'm, wait a minute. <laughs> this New York again. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mark, okay, don't, so. Don't hate, man. I'm just don't saying. Don't hate. I, don't hate. We don't even have a how team. How much y'all want me to root for? We don't have a Brooklyn, team. Brooklyn, Knicks, we have and no team. Giants, and Jets. That's too much New York. I ain't rooting okay. for all that. What team you root for? I am not rooting for all of that. What team you rooting for? Giants, and Jets, <laughs> and Knicks. <laughs> And Nets. Oh, that even rhymes. Giants and Jets and Knicks and Nets. Giants and Jets and Nick. They, you know, that's, that's too, wrong. They, that's too much New York to support. So you're bundling. I'm just saying <laughs> I can't su- That's too much New York to support. <laughs> okay. That's too much. I'm sorry. Okay. Is there, Hell no. Is there, a football team Hell you, no. is there a football team you support right now? See, that's what I'm saying. That's why you're going to ask for that. <laughs> I don't have a favorite team anymore yes. like the old days. Right. I don't. I, but I like individual teams. I'm like that about the, about the fo- basketball, too. Yeah. So I don't, I, I, you're right. I don't have the favorite teams that's right. Like, right. like but, before. Right. And Mario's conditions are based on a culture. I, part I like what, what Mario does is, though, he says, I just don't use the football team. I judge all of you guys in the city. How you guys conduct yourself. Yeah. I mean, if you want me to put you on my damn wall, you know, people talk about, I can't have you as, I can't be a fan of murderers. 
Oh, yeah, here's my t- here's my favorite player. Oh, He's in the pen. You can't say that. He's in the pen now. <laughs> He'll be out at 15. <laughs> okay. Let I'm me go. Saying. We're going to take our moment. That. So I can end this sports subject. We're going to bow our heads and try to figure out, and I'll follow up with this tomorrow, what the hell has happened to the Atlanta oh, Falcons geez. and the Houston Texans. Oh. You're talking about the Atlanta Falcons, who basically has gone... <laughs> I, I don't even. The, the, Tony Gonzalez Dude. came back because he thought they had a strong potential to go to the and Super Bowl. And they got Steven Jackson. And they are t- only winning two games. Oh, They're two man. and eight. Now, let me tell you something. Will the coach last? Just yes or no, Mario. Will the coach last? Two and eight. High expectations. Tony Gonzalez think you came can. back from I, I retirement. I not thought about it. I don't think you can. Because Dude. this is hard to explain. Well, now, they, were, they were like a game away from the Super Bowl. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting up here. Everybody's going. They got the same players. Now, they yeah, do have a couple ooh. of injuries. That's, like, that's, as, that, that's, that's as bad as almost almost as bad as Kansas City is good. That's right. Right. And, <laughs> and I, I didn't want to cover the Kansas City thing because they are who they think they are, which is Alex is just not that type of quarterback. But they got a good defense. Y'all just always. Right. The Steve Young giving them hints. <laughs> you know what? When you're undefeated, no, and I, no offense, Steve Young. When you're undefeated, you don't need to take advice from people. Wait a minute. That's all I say. No. When you're undefeated, that's the one time I even right. I admit. Right. I agree. When you're undefeated, you don't need advice even from Hall of Famers. Right. You know what they did? Okay, because they oh, didn't no. go undefeated. No, they didn't. They okay. Just, they just went against They just went Steve against the Young, team. Steve Young, you didn't do, you didn't go 9-0. Nah, I like, well, I know. Okay. I know you, you're there for the <laughs> underdog, and Alex is the underdog because of what happened in San Francisco. And I understand, but he got. I don't know if I'm success. there for Alex, so he's yeah, kind of boring. Yeah, well, okay, but I'm not rooting against him because he's, he's he's white bread. He <laughs> doesn't throw interceptions. No, he just doesn't play against good teams. He's, well, he good. He did. He's, they still did fairly solid. Now. Well, no, they did good, and they actually covered the spread. Is exactly what they predicted. So you I know, can't be. Mad. I was going to say that Vicky was about what I would have predicted. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Denver still got their thirty some points. Yes, yeah, they covered the spread. They said, yeah. "Look, they said you guys got to rate the offense. He doesn't throw a lot of touchdowns, so the weight is on his defense. And the defense did a great job." I said, "But you got Peyton Manning. That's you know, not that's right. Didn't you get the impression that the defense actually played well despite yes. the thirty some yes, points? Yes, they did. They did." <laughs> You I know, did too. They you played know they pretty made, well. You know the biggest mistake was happening? All their receivers were dropping balls. They just kept sending turnovers, few, yeah. and dropping balls. I was going, it's not Alex. Don't be dropping them balls. So my apologies. It wasn't Alex. Dropping balls. All right. Let's just say I am done. We'll pick up the rest tomorrow. That's my new new sports. Watch that game tonight, NFL. That's right, I think Alice News Sports. Written, directed, produced by the body black man. His unique Neil Urban look at sports. That's right. Big Alice News Sports is a recurring segment of the Morning Coffee with Mario the Show. Live Monday through Wednesdays, 10 to 12 noon. Come on and be there. Yeah! Macho and Nacho Macho and Macho Habanero